Hey everybody, it's Brandon the Brony Pony again. Um, so I'm back again with episode two of uh, Let's Play Ponytail Adventures, and we're just where we left off. Um, I'm currently rendering episode one, so by the time you see this, episode one will already be up on YouTube. But yeah, I figured while I uh, wait for that, um, I can record episode two because I really want to get back into this. So, all right. <clears throat> Now, without further ado, let's continue. The festivities are in full swing as you follow the mayor of ta out of town into one of Ponyville's parks. It seems like ponies from all over Equestria have come to visit the cozy country village. You look over the crowd of peso equines as they mingle with one another, moving from bench to bench as they converse with the locals and sample the various foods offered to them. With all the decorating finished, Rarity is now the center of attention of a small crowd. Her sister still looks huffy as she crosses her hooves and stares at her from a blanket. <clears throat> Applejack is still hard at work helping her family set out fresh big goody goodies, a line already queued full of ponies who want to try a bit of everything. And of course, even with all the commotion, you can see that bubbly pink mare darting from pony to pony as she offers them suggestions on which sweets to try next. Sometimes she doesn't even wait for an answer. She simply shoves another treat into a waiting pony's hooves. Wow. Dang. Behind all that hustle and bustle, you can make out the sweet chorus of songbirds singing away as the light yellow pegasus gently directs. She seems like a different equine than the shy, shuddering pony your tour group had come across earlier. At times, she even breaks down to song with her feathery friends. And my favorite. Strangely enough, you can't help but notice the princess in the center of it all. She's there with her helpers, looking over various papers. Let me date Starlight, please. <laughs> Since if their assistants have long stopped caring. Judging by the grimaces, um, grimaces they shoot each other before signing in unit. Then. Let me date Starlight or else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Another crowd, one which seems to dwarf Rarity's own, is none other than Rumidash. She jumps from pose to pose as camera flashes off go off like strobe lights. She's even quicker, offering to autograph them. Okay. Well, it looks like we haven't missed out on any of the turn, fun. Can turn up a little bit. There we are, all the way up. Why don't you get out there and socialize? You have a whole lot of new friends to make, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Oh boy, I'm excited that. Don't worry. <laughs> Say that it's again. Easier than you might Bats your flank with hoofs, she shoes you off into the crowd. Right, what should I do first? Well, you can bet I know who I'm talking to. You already know me, I gotta talk to Starlight. Yeah, I gotta talk to Starlight, I gotta do it. Gotta do it. You approach the princess- No, I want to approach Starlight! Whatever. The princess of friendship. Here for you, now that she's free and clear to talk. Only her assistants stand near her, both of who are, whom are holding large stacks of paper, helping her as she looks them over. As you step closer, you catch the attention of the tired-looking purple mare at the prince's side. Yes! <laughs> she shakes her head in just her warning, but it's too late. Trolley has seen you, smiling on to happy. Hello! Are you enjoying the picnic? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. At least, what I've seen of it. What you've seen of it? The princess looks confused for a few moments. You explain to yourself in a hurry. Yes, I had to go to the mayor's office to finish my citizenship. I see. Yes, getting your paperwork is always important. If only every pony held the same priorities. Or maybe if some pony would relax for a second. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, Snickers. The princess passes a scolding look, leaning Spike to shrug. You just give a nervous smile. Soon enough, Twilight's attention returns. Ahem. Like I said, if only every pony held the same priorities. Being organized is of the utmost importance. Don't you agree? Yeah. Agree. Okay, give me a bright smile. Yes, when things are organized, they just work better, don't they? Prince's face lights up with glee. Finally! Some pony who understands. I'm glad we think alike. You know, this picnic, for example. The cakes arrived here a full five minutes after the apples, so the food wasn't thermodynamically homogenous. And Rarity was still putting up decorations when every pony got here. Twilight, you know this was supposed to be an informal picnic, right? That doesn't mean it has to be uncoordinated. <laughs> By this point, Trins has seen the work of her frenzy over the situation. Is her mane frizzing? Breathe yes. I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you breathe. Start rolls are as small. You 
should come back later when she's less stressed. Oh man. Hey, it was nice meeting you properly this time. Um, yeah, thanks. You too. Is she going to be alright? She'll be fine. Just give her a second. Twilight? Sorry, turns away to the princess. Say bye. Oh, sweet. Hell, it's good to see you again. You should stop by the castle sometime. I will! You give this mom a turn raising your hoof. Well, that was certainly an event. Maybe she'll be less stressed later, nevertheless. Just focus on the princess. They're always going to meet still. Uh. I guess I'll come back to Starlight? Um. Uh. Uh. Okay. Day has grown long and you find yourself tired. You look around the clearing before spotting the mayor, overseeing events with the raven dutifully at her side, smiling you approach. I hope you can date Starlight in this game, I'm hoping. May you catch a side of you as you come closer. Hello! Are you done for the day? Uh, no. Take your head. Not yesterday, you give me just a bit longer. Of course. Enjoy the festivities! Hey, wait, what to do now? Can I still... I guess I can't talk to Starlight yet. I'll... I'll go come back to Starlight after the others. A cupcake sounds like it would hit the spot right about now. You walk up and smile, raising your hoof. Hi there, Pinkie Pie. Can I have a... You don't quite get the entire quest now before seeing... Tinky stuffs a cupcake right into your muzzle. She giggles, being right and you can imagine. Not as fancy as the ones I made for you earlier, but they're still tasty, aren't they? It's hard to talk with your mouth full of pastry, so you just nod, chewing as the savory tones of sugar and butter bathe your mouth deliciously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, oh! Do you know how to make cupcakes? No. Right now, I never had the opportunity to learn, and... This is cake! I'm taking a break! Oh, great. She's gonna teach me how to make cupcakes. Darn it, I wanna talk to Starlight! <laughs> What are we doing? We're gonna fall down on the road and spread her hose out in front of her. We're going to teach you how to make cupcakes! At least, kind of. We don't have an oven here, so... Cupcake class! Let me see if you're talking about it, she winks. I hope you're ready to take notes! Uh, okay. Oh boy. It's then that Pinky pulls out a series of charts from her main. How she had those stored in there, you might never know. It's maddening to even consider. She's Pinkie Pie! What do you expect? He goes over all the basics, ingredients, proportioning, scaling for size and volume. She goes over how different temperatures and times lead to different effects, how to make your own icing, and how to th then color the icing. Eggs, cream, flour, baking soda, baking powder, it all whirls through your head at an alarming rate. By the end of it, your mind is spinning, which isn't helped by the mayor bouncing around you. That was, that was fun! Brandon Hackwith! Sometime. If you come by the bakery, I'll be able to show you for real! Okay. Yeah, that sounds like fun, Pinky. Oh, I've gotta get back to the table. It's getting back up. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. 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 You're real good. What about the chemistry of baking? Pinky must be a good teacher, despite appearances. Okay. Let's go for, uh, let's get some cider. I will definitely be going back to Starlight, you can bet that. As you approach the bread of, spread of cobblers and pies, you find yourself staring across the table to ride the large Starlight from earlier. Big Mac? Yep. Hey, I was gonna do that. Oh, well. She wants to know if y'all want some cobbler. You bet I do! Oh, hey, yes, I would like some cobbler. Great. He watches as Apple Bloom finagles a spatula into her muzzle. She looks over at the baking portrait room. Then another indecisive chick she doesn't know where, how she wants to approach this. You start to smile at his mention as the Philly pushes in, working the spatula under a section of the cobbler. With the crusting broken, it smells delicious. Those right sweet sweet aroma is side of the cobbler's battered base, the golden crusted appearance. Ah! Oh no! No! Poor oh cobbler! Gosh. Hot, 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 hot! 
burning! Ah! Start to run around. The steam gun is threatening to get into your eyes and nares. Oh, jeez. You're blind paying. You don't even notice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With a clean and warm face, you sit on a blanket. You have a towel over your shoulders and pay the collar. Served by Big Mac this time. You look across the blanket and it's your idea, little filly. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to. Okay. It's okay, Apple. You didn't do it on purpose. Look down at the cobbler. With a hesitant emotion, take a bite. Give a smile to the filly. It's good. <laughs> I should get back. Uh, Y'all enjoy? I'll totally make up for it somehow. Thanks for not getting mad. No problem. Everybody makes mistakes, you know? You give the filly one more reassuring smile before deciding to take the cobbler a bit more slowly. Maybe you'll save the rest for later. Mmm, nah. Okay, let's see. What next? Hello! Are you done for the day? No, I'm not. Shake your head. Oh, yeah, Mr. Give me a bit. Of course. Now, let's go to Applejack. Uh, yeah, Applejack. Up, I said, my table, you look your lips. She's the one starting to pick up only a voice stops you. Now, you hold on there, youngin. It's been a while since the stallion tried to make off with the whole pie like that. Start looking up to see a wizened green apple colored mare of a white mane boasting an apple Latin shawl about her neck. She's staring at you with a critical eye. As you lock down with those judgmental eyes, another from more familiar voice comes to your rescue. What's going on here? Why are you snipping at one of our customers? I guess they couldn't get a voice for Granny Smith, I guess. I ain't! I'm snipping at a no good pie thief! That's what I'm doing, he ain't paid yet! Um, I'm sorry, I don't have any bits and... I'm just looks like he was simply more playing their have on her elder. Uh, oh, howdy! You were with the tour, right? Uh, what's your name again? Oh, it's Brandon Hackwith. <laughs> nice to meet you. This here is Granny Smith, owner of Sweet and Apple Acres, elder of the Apple family, and a pain in my rear. I'll show you a pain in the rear. Where are you? Why are you defending a pie stealer? I thought I taught you all better than that. Rick pulls the rubber hat down over her eyes and takes a deep breath. This is the third time I've told you, Granny. These pies are for the picnic. Ponies don't gotta pay for them. Maybe they'll add Granny Smith's voice in a later update. What? The early mirror looks sunrise from Revelation. Then how are we going to make bits? By keeping up public relations. Granny Smith seemed to have that idea sticking her tongue out at the sound of dismissal. Public relations! Every pony already knows we have the best apples in all of Ponyville! Granny! <laughs> Y'all go ahead and take your pile, right? I'll deal with my granny. Now you have gone ahead and given one away, this point we are going to be able to keep the farm, you know that? Leave into the conversation. With the end. Okay. Uh, let's go, Lyra. Full apple pie. This is for me. Oh, okay. Go to Fluttershy, and then I will go to Starlight again. Beyond the main picnic area, you spot the yellow Pegasus from the leading group zone. Fluttershy, right? You remember the main introducing her earlier, looking to meet her. You approach with a smile on your face, making your way around a pair of playing fulls. Excuse me, Miss Fluttershy? The voice rings out, you see the Pegasus stiffen. There's a ghastly surprise for her, and you interrupt her reverie. Re reverie, I think that's the same rather. Leading her to look over her shoulder in confusion. Oh, um, yeah. hello. Even if she speaks, you can see the mayor's figure with her. Her stat- with her. Your, her stature seems to shrink until she seems even shorter than yourself. She scrunches it in as you step closer. Um, did I catch you at a bad, a bad time? Just being in the presence of this mayor makes you anxious. No, I don't think so. Good. You managed to force out a smile. Nice to meet you. I'm Brandon Hackwood. Did you train all these birds yourself? <laughs> mayor only gives a nod in response. Both of you stand there in silence for a time before you hear her try to speak. I'm sorry, what was that? Um, I, I said, I'm 
her wingless covering her face in embarrassment. Well, now what do you do? Your bird seems beautiful. You must be a very good teacher. A small smile comes into Mary's face. She doesn't nod, but she just seems to be proud of that statement. Your relationships must be good, too. Would you mind introducing me to them? I don't know why that because there is. Oh, um, yes, I could do that. The Pegasus opens her wings then. Her eyes glimmering with delight as she loses a soft, lilting tone. In response, a few of the birds fly down from the tree branches, perching on the Pegasus' wings. An affectionate coo comes from a blue jay whom Fluttershy nuzzles. His name is Bird Maze. Oh, nice. He likes to talk. He'll talk to you all day, if you let him. Okay. The blue jay puffs his chest up as you focus on him. Um, his beautiful cobalt sheen. And she? Fluttershy offers her other wing to you, smiling. A sparrow hops onto the tip of the mare's feather. Um, chirping at you in a somewhat aggressive manner. Nice. She's territorial, but she has a beautiful voice. Man, this gave me ideas for role plays and how what Fluttershy's birds are called. You laugh at that, smiling happy as Fluttershy's has it's good over the names of every bird in the trees. Spend time with asking questions about the various plumages in there. It surprises you when the mayor s stops to address you again. Would you, um,. Would you like to hear them sing? Hooker's a hopeful smile, her eyes bright with the mirth. Uh, sure. I would love that. I can't be rude to Fluttershy. A little squee of happiness comes to her as she steps back towards the street. Her wings raise and she starts to course off with the beautiful steady sea. All the world seems to fall away. The glistening dew of the leaves above cast what looks like starlight upon this midday course of nature. You find your breath taken away. Wow, that's a really good singer, whoever did that. Hmm. It's only once the Fluttershy brings a pair of songs to a close that you find yourself aware once more. Reaching up, you find a tear in your eye. That, that was beautiful. Uh oh. Mary the Hours blushes, her ears laying flat once more. She looks to the side, though her smile cannot quite be restrained. Very hard on me. I can tell. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps I can come by in here again sometime? She's going to startle with this, but her anxiety returning. She looks up as though asking the birds. Perhaps that was exactly what she was doing, as once they all chirp down in acceptance, she smiles at you once more. I think that would be nice. Um, I live near the Everfree, so... The mayor gave me a map. I think I can find it. Try to steal your heart. Song resonating with you. Fletcher looks a little confused, worried. She ums, biting her bottom lip, and wilts once more. Uh, okay. Um, I should. We should sing some more, so. Uh, do, do you know where the Everfree is? Keep doing a great job. I have some other points I should meet, anyways. Thank you for that, Miss Fletcher. It was a pleasure to meet you. I'm sure I can find it. Uh, okay. You too. Okay, now my goal in this, guys, is to get with Starlight, as you guys know, because you know my channel, you know what I do, my audios. Okay. More vibrant, okay. You know I gotta meet Starlight, you know I gotta try again for Starlight, so let's try Starlight again. As you approach, Spike steps up, waggling his claw in your- Twilight! Uh, Twilight! Give her some space for now, yeah? Darn it! Come by the castle sometime. Maybe she'll be calm by then. <sighs> Darn it. Alright. Drat. Alright, I'll try to talk to Rarity. The crowd around Rarity is formidable. You try to push your way inside, but it's no use. You can't force back. You find yourself sighing. Uh, um, come back later. Maybe things will clear out a bit. You can find something else to do in the meantime. Okay. Rainbow Dash. You approach Rainbow at Rainbow Stage, determined to get an autograph. Well, despite the crowd, time ticks. You wait. Autographs are given out. Tricks are formed. You gas off Rainbow Dash. Rainbow dives. A cloud for pants. Come out more signatures. Eventually, you make your way to the front of the line where Rainbow Dash stands on a platform, green down. Hey you. there. Name? Brandon Hackwith. Awesome. Pegasus flares her wings out, showing herself off as she postures. <laughs> You're gonna get an autograph. You should be thankful, you know. 
You find yourself flustered by the mayor's demeanor, waving a huff. I was, I was hoping to get to know you a little more with me moving in, a, in and all. Oh yeah? Way cool. Probably most place to be, you know? I mean, I'm here and everything. And that's all the reason the pony, a pony needs? You preempt in the mayor's line of reasoning, passing Grin up to the, the Pegasus. Rainbow laughs, wagging a ling a huff. <laughs> Okay. A wry smirk comes from the mirror as you pass through the photos. You have it. A signed photo from Rainbow Dash. You feel excited just holding it. You open your mouth to say more to the mirror, only to be pushed forward by the next pony to the line. Hey, come on, you have others waiting. The flush, you move out of line. You hold onto your photo with a sigh. You might just need to catch up practicing after all. Alright, now I think I'm gonna be. Oh, actually, let, let me talk to Sweetie Belle. Talk to Sweetie Belle. I feel bad for her. Hey, it's that filly from earlier. What did Rarity call her? Regardless, you feel bad for her. She looks so alone. With compassion in mind, you move to sit by her smiling. Hey there, what else you hear by yourself? Unicorn blinks up at you, then with a deadpan expression, she mumbles. What do you care? Well, it's just there seems to be plenty to do. Surely you can find something to help cheer you up. The filly's voice climbs to a shrill whine. It seems that was enough to open the floodgates. It's just not fair! Rarity's my sister, but she gets all the attention, and my friends aren't even free to play with me! Apple Bloom has to help her family with all that stupid apple stuff, and Scootaloo's way more interested in Rainbow Dash than hanging out! Okay, that does not sound like CMC. They are supposed to be best friends. <laughs> Wow. With an accusatory hoof, Sweetie motions to the growling, growing crowd around the colorful Pegasus in the distance. You nod in solemn, solemn understanding. I see. So, you feel left out? Yeah. You both sit there in silence for a few seconds before she looks up at you. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, so my name's Sweetie Belle. What's yours? Not supposed to talk to strangers? She tells me her name. Me? My name is Brandon Hackwith. <laughs> yeah, most ponies are in their own little world. So, what should I do, huh? I don't want to just be alone all day. What should she do? Hmm. Well, you can hang out with me. Uh, no thanks. You're way too old. Even Big Sis can't keep up playing with me. Darn. Um, what? Sit fire gas for a good few seconds. I'm not too old. I'm not. So, I'm proving not too age to keep the belly company. Get up and start as doing a spy dance. Several ponies begin staring. Oops! Oops! <laughs> uh oh. Shame weighs down on you. What are you supposed to do in this situation? You should go to the snack bar and hide your head in the punch bowl. Oh god, and that's embarrassing! Oh man. Well, um, I suppose, uh, I'll be done with the tour so I can go to the castle later and see Starlight. The day has grown long and you find yourself tired. You look around the clearing before spotting the mayor overseeing the mansion and smiling your approach. The mayor catches eyes you come away. Yes. You nod. Well then, I suppose. Really retired. Long yawn. Of course. Yes, Mayor. Please handle the cleanup with the princess. Yes, ma'am. Please away from the picking grounds towards your home. Did you enjoy your time out today? Oh yes, plenty of snacks and so many ponies to meet. When it comes to being organized. I do not want to end up with Twilight. Nothing against that, but Starlight is a bit like a better Twilight. Please, I do not want to end up. Now, if only you had remembered to save up, yes? Yeah, right now.
just saving real quick. I'm not ending the episode, don't worry. Aha, uh -huh, it was an accident. I was just so excited to move to Ponyville, I... No need to explain yourself. I'm sure you'll do just fine. I'm happy to work with you on your lack of funds. Oh, they meant save up my bits. <laughs> Even if it means a little bit of debt. I heard Sweetie Belle screaming earlier. Oh, you did? Mm hmm You know, fillies have an overactive imagination. Well, yes, they are fools, after all. Indeed. They are our future and your future neighbors. You should treat them with respect. Ah, I thought I was respectful. I did not know funky dances were a sign of respect. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's sputtered, give me a cough. <laughs> Here's how the mayor leads you across the town. He passed through Down Square and around the rotunda that forms the dance hall. A few ponies wave at you with a smile. You can't help but wave back at the cheerful residents. It really is peaceful here. How many waves have you received today? You seem to be one with the peace here in Ponyville. You look at the mayor with a half smile. Yeah? Well, I mean, it's just so tranquil and... It really is. Miss Fluttershy seems to agree with me, by the way. She thought you were delightful. Even going out of her way to let me know so. She did? Oh, yes! She and her avian friends seem to hope you'll stay around for quite a while. And that is no mean compliment. Fluttershy almost never speaks about her opinion, even if she is better about it than she used to be. You feel a warm sense of pride of this. For a moment, you recall the lit. L L Lilting song of Fluttershy and her birds. You really should visit them sometime. Where was it she lived? The Never Key? No, the Blazer Bee? Uh oh. You might have to ask for directions. Well, I'd like to visit the castle, please. Okay. The clear, flowing waters glisten as you watch. It's so pure, pure. Much cleaner than the larger cities. You really made that right, the right choice moving here. Oh boy, yeah, you bet I did. <laughs> I heard there was a little bit of an incident at the apples table. Oh, yes, there was a bit of a disagreement about the apple pies. It's a look of tired restraint in the mayor's eyes. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Applejack assured me everything was okay. That's good. How did you enjoy their cooking? He salivated a bit, recalling the taste. It was delicious. Oh dear, now you're hooked. Sorry, I'll have to cut that part out. Oh dear, now you're hooked. Okay. You so are. By the By way, you. By the way, you're oh. not too upset at Apple Bloom, are you? Just the mention of it makes your face twinge. The heat echoes fresh in your mind. No, it was an honest mistake. She was only trying to help. The mayor passes you a sympathetic smile. Good. Forgiveness is key. And you never know, a bad experience now could lead to a better one later. The mayor wisdom comes with a hinting smile. Mayor's with you're taken past the sp you're taken past the sprawling line of townhomes. The anticipation is we uh, wearing on you. Just what will your home look like? You try to relax, but it's impossible. Even as your mind wanders, the mayor begins to speak again. Goodness, Pinky had so much to say about you. Did she? She taught me how to make cupcakes. It was actually kind of fun. Oh, I'm sure it was. If Pinkie Pie took the time to teach you how to make cupcakes, well, that can only mean good things for you. You really think so? Pinkie struck you as the kind of pony to help any time she was able. Oh, yes. Not to mention the fact that she kept talking about you. All about what a quick learner you are. And that she looks forward to giving you a surprise. A surprise? I had best not spoil it for you. Okay. What kind of surprise can Pinkie be planning? I see you have one of Miss Dash's photos there. You blink back at your saddlebags and I see the photo sticking out. You tuck it back in with an awkward smile. Ah, uh, yeah, she gave me a signed one. Did she now? Well, good on you. Standing that long in line could not have been easy. It was quite the crowd. <laughs> All good things take effort, right? Exactly. Keep that mindset, and you will go far. You make your way out of town, following a dirt path that leads towards the outskirts. A few cottages dapple the countryside, giving a sprawling, landed feeling of the hills outside of town. You briefly wonder if your home will be like one of these. 
As the conversation peters out, you become more cognizant of your surroundings. A nice cool breeze causes the trees around you to rustle. The beaten earth path, path wanders lackadaisy from the main road, putting you into the furthest, farthest outskirts of the city limits. Ponyville stretches into the distance, a great blur of life and color as you stand at the edge of it all. A small outcropping of trees leads the way into to an inner crescent, where, nestled between a series of large oaks, a small rundown cabin hides away. And here we are! You feel your heart drop as you look upon it. It's a nice location, but the cabin itself, it's so run down. This is your new home? Your expression must have been noticed. I'm sorry. This is the only place I can really lend out to you without a down payment of some type. It was a wonderful little place back in the day, but ever since the last owner left, we haven't really been able to find a steady tenant for it. Still, with a little work, it could turn out quite nice, don't you think? Yeah. Put on a brave smile as you look at, take a look around. The yards are a bit overrun, but it does have some space for you to work with. The trees give a fair amount of shade. It does seem rather quiet, perfect for a peaceful country life. It started to feel a little bit better out the whole scenario. It does have some good potential. Great! Now keep your chin up, dear. Here, let's take a look inside. The outside was delightful once you thought about the possibilities, but the inside? Oh boy. Now, take a breath. It must have been written on, on your face. The age-weathered wooden floorboards, the half-broken desk, some of the knobs were even missing from the doors. At least the bed seemed decent, though, for, for a stack of hay. Cracked molding covers the walls, peeling paint splotched here and there. One of the windows had a draft you could even feel now. The outside need work, the inside needs a miracle. It looks great, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Well now, uh, this is your home for the time being. I know it could use a little... Mayor's eyes cast about the room as though the right words would be hidden in its nooks or cobwebs. Uh, renovation, uh, so to speak. So, I have a few places I can recommend to you. Perhaps sofas and quills to start. A nice sofa perks up the place, yes? Or Inkwell's Emporium for a new desk or table. There are a few places you can visit around town. Aha, uh -huh. so thanks, Mayor. You give your own four smiles as you walk around the room, finally setting your saddlebags down on the ground. The fatigue of the day was starting to catch up with you, and it showed. You must be tired. Well, here you are. These are your keys. She sets the key tab down atop the dusty nightstand. And the nightstand collapses on itself, unable to support a king key. Wow, dang. Oh, that's sad. All is quiet for those few seconds. That map you were using. Pinky seems to have oh, grabbed hold sorry. of some of our older ones, so I have a new one for you here. I didn't realize that was her talking. And that's everything. You are an official resident of Ponyville. Congratulations. Despite everything about your living conditions, there was still that. You made it. You made it to Ponyville. Warmth spreads in your chest as you realize it hits. I'll leave you to adjust to your new surroundings. If you, have, you any... have any questions, feel free to ask one of us at Town Hall. Now, you have a good night. You smile, raising a hoof of the mayor leaves before turning the door into your cabin. It was run down, de decrepit, but it was yours. Your eyes alight upon the keys left on your half-broken desk. All mine. Press a shower, then sleep might be called for. Tonight is a new day after all. You wonder if the shower even works. Aw, oh, that's it? Aw, oh, man. Well, I guess... Well, I guess that's it, guys. Um, I guess I can't date Starlight yet, so... I guess that's the end for this roleplay, this uh, play, let's play, until I can uh, um, uh, get another update, but... Sorry, I, I guess that's it, guys. So... Um, I guess that'll be it for this Let's Play until a new update comes out. So anyway, until the next update, I guess uh, uh, see you guys next time.